greetings. This is just a um, quick recording I'm doing in relating to something that I just experienced recently. And basically what happened, you know, I went to with someone to an Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist church. Actually, it was the one in Brixton, which is quite big. And they were having a meeting there. And what they were actually talking about was um, in relation to um, well, effectively being vegetarian, and I know I've heard of this before, so I don't know if it comes from Ellen G. White, but I know one of their big guys, Doug Batchelor, has talked about it. He's trying to convince people to be vegetarian, so I'm just surprised, was surprised they were still trying to push it. And, um, obviously they will call it healthy eating, and they was, um, you know, going into some of the things that they seem to think scientists have found out. But as he was talking, he was basically just mostly, well, talking about what was in his head. And so I'm waiting for him to come up with some scriptures against it, but that just didn't seem to be happening. So I, while he was talking, I decided to look some up myself. I was showing them to the friend I went down there with as well. And also he was talking about how the eating meats can cause sickness. But yet, yeah, that's not something you sort of really read of in the Bible. Um, but so what I'm going to do is just read you some of the scriptures um, that I'd found while I was, well, basically he was going on, not really getting anything from the, from the Bible. Okay, first thing I found out was that the Levites, they actually had to eat quite a bit of meat, especially considering the sacrifices that um, God had ordered them to do. So since God gave the orders, they had to do it. So the first thing one I'm going to read from is Leviticus 10, 16 to 20. And it says, And Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burnt. And he was angry with Eliezer and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, Wherefore have ye not eaten the sin offering in the holy place? seeing it is most holy, and God has given it you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement for them before the Lord. Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. You should indeed have eaten it in the holy place as I commanded. And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, and such things have befallen me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? And when Moses heard that, he was content. So you can see here how the eating of the sin offering after it was burned is an important thing. So, of course, if a vegetarian had come along and tried to convince Aaron and his sons that oh, maybe it's a bad thing or come up with this sort of usual presentation, then they might end up actually being put to death because they disobeyed God. And this is something that, of course, vegetarians will conveniently forget just because they're now living in relaxed times where they can ignore, pretty much ignore what God is saying. And this is one of the ways you can see why that pastor wasn't bothering to actually go into the Bible. And I maybe he even knows that there are so many references to meat being eaten that he simply couldn't really bring many scriptures. And effectively, he's just really just trying to repeat what the scientists have been saying. He said, but of course, the scientists are heathen, and they don't know how to get us to live forever. Another thing he wasn't doing was also using trying to use Jesus, because that's another um, way that it would go against what he was saying. Um, the first thing we can read of uh, with Jesus is in Luke 24, um, 39 to 43, and it says, Behold, my hands are my feet, that it is I myself handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. And you notice that when they gave him the food, Jesus didn't, suddenly say, no, I, I, I must be like an Adventist and be a vegetarian. No, he just ate it. And it's the fact that it was a, he, they gave him, obviously, the broiled fish, but also a honeycomb, which, of course, they'd say isn't good for his teeth and has lots of 
sugars and carbohydrates. But of course, since Jesus has so much knowledge, then if those, what he was eating really was dangerous, I think he would have told them and then refused it. But of course, he didn't. He just ate it straight away um, right in front of them. And the other of his thing is that when he said, um, he asked if they had any meat, they actually gave him meat. They didn't try and say, no, we've got some vegetarian stuff. No, he asked for meat and they gave him meat. And this is Jesus speaking, not just some random person. And we can read again um, of the next, of another incident that Jesus had. And that is in John, well, with, with non-vegetarians, I should say. And that is in John 21, 9 to 13, which says, As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three, for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples thus asked him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh, and taketh bread, and gave them, and fish likewise. And so you notice yet again, it's obvious that Jesus liked his fish since he was cooking it this time. It wasn't what they had asked he had asked them for he was actually cooking fish so so that you can only presume that is one of his chosen dishes and the fact that he was giving them fish as well so i presume that they must have been eating a lot while they were going around um doing their um sort of discipleship training basically so that certainly goes to show that jesus didn't have anything against fish in terms of um, eating it, and well, I presume that none of the disciples were vegetarians, especially wouldn't feel that they're at a level to advise Jesus that it was a the fish was a bad thing to eat. But also, the other thing that shows is that when you're cooking fish, it's best to barbecue it or boil it because those are the two types of fish he ate. But it doesn't show any way that the fish was fried, so maybe Jesus could have agreed that fried fish would have been bad for you. So, so far we've got um, the Adventists on one side and God and Jesus on the other side. Um, but with them going on about how, you know, eating the wrong foods can make you sick, the thing about it is that's not what God says. So here we're going to read to show God explaining why there is sickness. And obviously this is sickness for the children of Israel, but hey, if the children of Israel are sick, why would anyone else be healthy? And we can read this in Deuteronomy 28, which is, of course, the famous one that the Hebrew Israelites are bandying around. And it's Deuteronomy 28, 59 to 61. It says, Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So if you're going in the, uh, in the world and finding that there seems to be a certain group of people who seem to be very sick, the reason why is not because of the food they're eating and because they're eating meat, it's because God has put a curse on them because they disobey, or what, well, their fathers disobeyed them. And also even the people now are disobeying him as well. And um, there could be some people who hear this who could have the curses on them. And at least now that you will know that, no, it's not the food you're eating. It's because you have to repent and turn back to God. But the thing about it, those sicknesses that were on the children of Israel, they weren't supposed to be on them. As we can read in Deuteronomy 7, 12 to 15, which says, Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine, and thy oil, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep, in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people, there shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest unto, upon thee, 
but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So there you have it, that's how it's supposed to be. And so you can imagine, if they actually obeyed God, they'd end up in the land, and they have plenty of cows, which of course will be there, and that they could eat and cook. And of course, they wouldn't have any of the sicknesses that come from eating all those cattle and the sheep. Because if God says he will take away all sickness, that's exactly what's going to happen. And that will then mean that the meat, eating the meat will not make you sick. So any sicknesses that come from eating meat, they come from disobeying God. That's it. It's as simple as that. And if any vegetarian comes and tries to tell you anything different, especially if they're from the church, then just ignore what they're saying. And and you notice he even says the cattle wouldn't be barren as well, because that's how God, good God is. He doesn't just look after the humans. Even if you do well to him, your animals will be looked after as well. And the thing is, it was obviously the Israel in the past messed up. But there is an Israel in the future who can actually get those promises back and we can read of that in Deuteronomy 30 7 to 9 which says and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee and thou shalt ret- and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command thee this day and the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy land for good for the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers and so if you read that Deuteronomy 30 you will see that this promise is to a future generation of Israel which is past the ones who ended up in the land so and notice nowhere did it say there anything about you having to stop eating meat and becoming a vegetarian in order to get The blessings, no, it's always to do all that God commands and all his commandments. That's the thing that needs to be done and not to become a vegetarian. And, of course, if the land is blessed then and God is helping the crops to grow, then you won't actually need, obviously, any insecticides on the crosses. So, obviously, the vegetarians will complain that some of the things might have, you know, insecticides and animals eat this and that. So, But it doesn't matter if God's... if, If the... Real Israelites turn back to God and he brings them back into the land and he will bless the, what they are doing and they will not need any insecticides, no funny chemicals and they'll be able to eat the animals and the, well, after they cook them, of course and because sickness will be taken away it won't be the eating of the meat um, that, that will actually uh, cause any problems because God will have taken all the sickness away. Another thing that I remembered as I was there is that uh, when you look on the earth, there's a whole load of grass on there, and sometimes you go on the common, and there's just grass for miles. Problem is, if we all turn vegetarian, we're not going to be able to eat that grass, because basically the grass is there to be eaten by animals, and then once the animals grow up, then you eat, then you eat, cook the animals, or kill the animals, cook them and eat them, so that the grass that they've eaten has been processed, and you can get the energy from that. So basically, if we all turn to vegetarians, all that grass would basically go to waste. And you notice that whenever um, God is talking about blessings in the Bible, he's always mentioning cattle and sheep because he knows they are the main animals that will process that grass and then, of course, can be eaten and then turned into good proteins. So basically, if, if anyone in the church goes on to you about trying to become a vegetarian, best thing you can do is ignore them and bring them these scriptures to show that no, God does not agree with what they're saying and Jesus doesn't agree with what they're saying either and that it's time for them to, they can keep being vegetarian themselves but stop giving people rubbish about the meat being bad for you because basically the Bible doesn't say that. Okay, subscribe if you want to hear any uh, sort of other um, sort of subjects that I talk about similar to this. Okay, bye.